but it's got really deep in comprehending the difference between tags and rules. Rules and tags. Once you understand the secret of the difference between the two, you can master your website. You can be master of your domain. If you're a Seinfeld fan, you get what I mean. Anyway, we're going to go to our website here, and I'm just going to type into Google IPSUM, which brings up my favorite text generator. I'm just going to click this link right here. I'm going to click down here, and I'm going to generate five paragraphs of text. This way, it's not a typing class. If you wanted a typing class, then you need to go to the thinktype.com website. Just kidding. Okay, now let's go back to Dreamweaver. I'm going to return key here, and I'm going to paste, copy, paste. Now, at this point, guys, nothing to do with the web here. You should definitely know how to copy and paste things. Command C, Command Control C, Control V, Windows, Command C, Macintosh, Control V, Macintosh. So copy and paste. You got to know how to do that before you do this. Okay. Now, what is a tag? There's 92 plus in HTML4. There's more in HTML5, but there's 92 tags. The tag talks to the content of the page. Everything's inside of a tag. Therefore, you can communicate with the content. What do I mean by content? Content could be text. Content could be a QuickTime movie. Content could be a flash file, which is an object in the HTML world. A flash Swift file is an object, O-B-J-E-C-T, which is one of the tags inside of HTML. So once you understand the difference between tags and rules, everything else is child's play. Now, if you didn't see my first video, we're working with classic mode, and I selected the layout tab. It's going to be much simpler to accomplish what we need to do if you follow these directions, classic mode. Layout tab. The only thing we have here is our CSS palette, our property palette, and our insert palette, all found under the window menu. Okay, let's go to code mode for a second. So I'm going to select code. So a tag is anything that's inside of this opening less than symbol and greater than less than symbol. Okay, so body tag opens, body tag closes. Forward slash key is a, forward, is a closing tag. Here's a P for paragraph tag. Paragraph tag open, paragraph tag closing. I'm just gonna close this for a second. Here's my closing tag, okay? So don't confuse tags with rules. Right now, this page has no rules. These are my default rules for the browser. Now, Default's a bad idea when working with web design because there's a lot of different browsers. Each browser has its own defaults. So if you don't create rules for your tags, your customers, your boss, your girlfriend, your boyfriend is going to be very upset with you. Possibly even grandma is going to be upset when you design her knitting website. Okay, so by default, this page has no rules. It has tags. But it has no rule. The content of the page is inside the body tag. So here's the body tag. What you can visually see on the page, all the content for your web page goes inside the body tag by default. When I copied and pasted, it put it inside the body tag. So let's understand tags and rules. If I go to my CSS out over here for a second, again, this is not up here. You simply go to window. CSS styles. So I'm going to click down here. I'm not going to make a rule at this point. I just want to share with you a very powerful technique here. If I click the new CSS dialog box, by default, this pop down menu defaults to class, which is beyond my thinking. I don't know why Adobe does this, but I didn't write the program. So we're going to select tag. Now, once you select tag, because my cursor happened to be inside the P for paragraph tag, it assumes that that's my tag selector for the P for paragraph, because that's where my cursor is. So, what is a tag? Click right here, to the right here. These are tags. These are your scores and scores of HTML tags. Now, included in these tags are the new HTML5 tags, the canvas tag, the header tag, the section tag, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
okay? So these are tags. Now, do you have to know every single, all 90, 100 plus tags? Actually not, because it's kind of like saying that there are 750,000 words in English language. We get by with 30,000 words. So you don't have to know every single tag, but you have to understand that you could have a rule for the tag. So any tag in here could have a rule to it. So as an example, I could have a rule for my P for paragraph tag. I could have a rule for my object tag, which would be a Swift file, a Swift file tag, an HTML5, a nav tag, okay, a menu tag. So the key here is you select the tag and make the rule, but these are the tags. These are the rules for the tags. Right now I have neither. I'm going to cancel this dialog box. So everything on the page has to be identified inside of a tag. Without a tag, I can't talk to. I can't communicate with something. So as an example, if you lined up five black Nikon cameras, same model number, how would you tell them apart? You would tell them apart by the serial number because it's been tagged with the serial number. So generically, they're Nikon cameras. Generically, they're black. Generically, they're the same model. But how can you distinguish them? Because they're serial numbers, so they're tagged. So this particular content right here has been tagged with the paragraph tag. How do I know that? If you come down here to the bottom left, you can see there's my tag. Now, notice that that's the tag because that's where my cursor is. That's the tag for that particular paragraph. Now, everything in here is a paragraph. But if I click here, it's just going to select that particular paragraph. If you want to select the entire content, that's what the body tag does because everything on the page you can see is inside the body tag. Body tag opening, body tag closing. So back in the day, we had to learn how to write this code from scratch. Opening body tag, closing body tag, closing HTML tag because it's an HTML page, opening HTML tag. Okay, title tag, we titled our document inside of our previous video. Also, I have a mistake in here. I just want to put one pipe symbol, not two. So the title tag is what appears in your metadata, which goes to your search engine. So this is not publishable to the viewable site. The body tag is publishable to the viewable site. So tags and rules, rules and tags. There's different types of, there are all different types of CSS, I'm sorry. There's all different types of HTML tags, but you have to create a rule for that particular tag. So as an example, if you select the body tag on the bottom left, it's going to select everything on the page because everything on the page that I can visually see that's web publishable is inside the body tag. So by default, when I copied and pasted, Dreamweaver put these separate lines of text inside of separate paragraphs. Now let's understand something. My objective is to get you to think the way the software thinks. All Dreamweaver does, period, end of conversation, all Dreamweaver does is write code. It writes code. Dreamweaver does not self-publish. Dreamweaver simply creates code for the browser to interpret. So the browser is going to see that this is a tag and based on the rules which we'll create in a second, it's going to talk to that particular tag. Okay, so let's change this header to mysite.com. Okay, I'm going to hit the return key and the second, I'm going to put a catchphrase. Okay, I'm going to type and type it and think the way the software thinks. In fact, let's do a self aggrandizing plug here. Let's change this mysite.com to actually my site, which is think, learn, learn, dot com. Now, what kind of tag is this content? Well, in our previous video, we turned this once existing paragraph tag into an H1 tag. In the property palette, here's my formatting. So I can see that this particular paragraph has been formatted to be an H1 tag. 
as opposed to a header 2 tag or an h3 tag, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, a very quick way that we can change the size from h1, which is the biggest, h6, which is the smallest, is simply hit a keyboard shortcut. Windows can control 1 to control 6. Macintosh, command 1 to command 6. So I hit command 1, header 1. Command 2, header 2. Command 3, header 3. Let's make it back to header 1. Now, notice I didn't have to do this because it's per paragraph, per paragraph. So I can select this paragraph. This is my tagline. Okay, I want to make this header 2. So command 2, or I can go down here to my property palette and select header 2. So this content has been tagged with header 2. How do I know that? Because it says header 2 right here. Header 2 inside the body tag, inside the body tag. So if you look at your code, this header, this content right here is inside the H2 tag. This content is inside the H1 tag, part of the body tag. Okay. Now, a little trick here for HTML5 users is we can put this content here, which is H1 tag and H2 tag. It's a very, very powerful technique I'm going to share with you. This has to do with search engine optimization in HTML5. So, new in HTML5, there's a tag called H group, header group. We're going to combine H1 tag and the H2 tag inside of a tag called H group. So, how can I do this? Simple, simple, simple. I could go to my code. Now, I'm going to keep you guys away from the code because it's not necessary. Dreamweaver does most things for you without touching the code. If you want to look at code, look at some of the other confusing videos on YouTube. They'll confuse the hell out of you. I want to make this so simple. At the same time, keep it professional as far as designing the site. So how can I surround this selected content, keyword selected, in order to affect something? You have to select something. So I've selected these two pieces of content, H1 tag, the H2 tag. Now, Dreamweaver allows me to do a quick tag selection, quick tag editor, which is simply command T. Macintosh command T, Windows control T. So that's going to pick up my quick tag editor here. It's going to wrap the selected content inside of a tag. We want to wrap this inside of a tag called H group. Now, all I have to do is start typing it HG, and it pops up right here. I simply hit the return key once, the return key twice. This content, which is once the H1 tag, and still is, by the way, is an H2 tag, is inside the H group tag. I don't know that, but it says it right here. So if you were to select the H group tag, it's going to select that content, because in the code mode, you'll see the H group tag surrounds the H tags. Again, this is for mobile devices, HTML5, iPads, iPhones, Android, because the search engine will pick up something that's inside of an H group. So typically you could find an H1 tag, H2 tag, and possibly an H3 tag together, so it's one thought. So this is my site, plus this is my tagline, so index that way inside of a search engine. Okay, so very, very important step here that I tagged it by hitting Command T, Command T, tags the content. 